team, talk to me. How are we doing? Welcome to the Alex Gem Experience. This podcast is going to go incredibly deep as usual. So the topic of today's podcast is why do people get jealous? All right, so we know what jealousy is. Let's firstly cover that. What is jealousy? Because it can be slightly subjective to different people. Jealousy is essentially when we kind of feel resentful towards someone because of something that they've, some kind of perceived value that they have, whether it be some kind of like accomplishments, some kind of luxuries that they might have, that they might have inherited or actually worked for, but still have. Uh, maybe because of someone's more like fortuitous lifestyle or situation. We can be envious for everyone. We can envy and, and be jealous of someone because of their physical appearance, their physical stature, their, their size, their, their height, their muscularity, uh, their, their beauty. We could, um, we could be jealous of their wealth. We could be jealous of someone's charisma, someone's humor. We could be jealous of someone's ability to, to do well with, uh, des- to, um, you know, to date. Uh, wildly attractive people and, and things of these nature. Now, we can be jealous of people's status, their amount of power, their control in their lives. We can be jealous of people's energy levels. We can be jealous of the way people um, take care of themselves in their fashion sense. We can, do you know what I mean? This, this spectrum is absolutely endless. We can be jealous of people for uh, great, great diverse uh, reasons, okay? So now that we've got that out of the way, Let's also uncover a few things. Let's start to dive into why people become jealous and what we can learn about people when they uh, experience jealousy, to be honest with you. So I'm going to uncover several strategies um, that cause people to feel jealous and also that teaches us what we can learn about jealous people. And I think this will make us, our listeners out there, whether you uh, deem yourself to be a jealous person or not, or in certain circumstances, for example, Uh, By the end of this podcast, you will have much greater control of your emotions, of your feelings, and um, uh, you'll view jealousy a little differently because we're going to go in seriously deep. So let's begin. So listen, one of the main reasons, one of the main things we can learn about someone experiencing jealousy is that they tend to be quite insecure individuals, okay? Because jealousy conveys a lack of self-esteem. Okay, they might feel unworthy, they might feel like they don't deserve certain things and so on and so forth. And you know what, in many ways, it can convey a person's lack of trust. It might be a a lack of trust in themselves. Uh, For example, um, say if someone starts, um, I don't know, goes for a certain position in the workplace and they didn't get it and someone else does. I'm reminded of uh, (laughs) the play Macbeth. Uh, by William Shakespeare, of course. Um, and Iago, uh, the villain, the antagonist, he um, he believes he's going to be made lieutenant and, and promoted by a fellow. And a fellow actually promotes a, an arithmetician, um, a gentleman called Michael Cassio, who's very good with planning. He's very intelligent and these sort of skills. And Iago decides to follow uh, a fellow. Sorry, I, got comp- I don't know why I said Macbeth. Anyway, go back. A fellow. He, he decides to uh, follow a fellow in order to turn upon him. Um, and this is how people are with themselves as well. If you don't trust others, if you don't trust yourself, you will become jealous and you will look to be deceitful. And therefore, you will never be trustworthy because you didn't trust people in the first instance. OK, so. Mistrust is often linked to a deep insecurity. And, and, and these sorts of things. So it can be incredibly detrimental to our mental and emotional health. Uh, and it can prevent us from achieving the sort of things that we want to achieve in our lives. So what's another avenue? It can be... A, jealousy can arise when people are quite obsessive in their thoughts. Okay, I call it an overactive ego. So... People might experience certain challenges in their lives, like certain um, certain things that you can actually forgive people for, for feeling jealous. Like, for example, some people might be jealous of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Some people might be jealous of a David Beckham. 
Uh, some people might be jealous of LeBron. Some people might be jealous of Oprah Winfrey, even though she's been through a tremendous amount in her childhood. Some people might be envious of a Beyonce and these sorts of things. Okay, We can understand that to a degree, right? Because they've got some incredibly uh, good things going for them in many ways. But the challenge is this, you see. Once we condition ourselves to experience jealousy on a frequent basis, what happens is... We can actually become jealous, not because of experiences, but just because of our thoughts. And what I mean by that is once you're used to running certain patterns in your mind, certain thoughts, which create certain chemicals in our brain, certain feelings. And when that leads to certain behaviors, such as feeling jealous and wanting to um, wanting someone's downfall or what have you. Um, then that's often a sign of uh, deep insecurity, like I touched upon earlier. And it's what happens is when you experience jealousy so often, you begin to experience jealousy for no real reason because it's habitual, because it's now a, a subconscious emotional pattern. You've now conditioned yourself to experience jealousy, for example, so often. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be jealousy. It could be anger or frustration or, or indignation or it could be uh, disbelief or it could be anxiety or it could be anything right it could be stress or fear um or being worried or concerned about things once you experience something so often you begin to repeat it for no apparent reason because it's something that your body your unconscious looks to execute um on a daily basis as often as it can because it likes what's familiar it likes what it's accustomed to okay so this is how people start to kind of create uh I call it their uh, emotional home, negative emotional homes. I write about that in my book, The Art of Power, Happiness and Success. You can get that at Amazon. You can also get it at my store at www.alexgemstore.com. Go hook yourself up. You're going to love it. It's a fantastic read. Anyway, um, it becomes habitual. It becomes their default mode. It's something that they go to in order to experience certain thoughts, feelings. And it's just like uh, essentially having certain hardware, just like you would program a computer, uh, an app of, of some sort, for example. It's the same sort of procedure, okay? It's systematic um, and therefore consistent. The unconscious loves consistency. Anywho, um, where should we go from here? Wow, it doesn't get much deeper than that, to be fair. And it is our main uh, prerogative to kind of be consistent to be honest with you. Um, And we want to live out the uh, instructions of our subconscious, if you want to put it that way. And this is why some people, they understand logic, they understand being rational, yet they fail to do the right things consistently. It's because their addictions, their obsessions, their subconscious programs are running the show. In fact, 95% of your thoughts, your emotions, your perceptions, your beliefs are in fact subconscious programs. We just don't know most of the programs in which we run on a daily basis. Uh, because we are the the mice on the, uh, what did they call that thing that spins around? Anyway, you know what I mean. Uh, we are in it and we're not detached from the experience enough because we're so um, immersed in our own egos. We identify with our minds so much that um, we, we literally cannot step aside and see things as they are. We blow things out of proportion. Uh, we make things uh, meet our perceptions and our mindset and our narrative. Makes it, We all have our own na- narrative, who we are, our identity, where our life is heading, these sorts of things. And, and we live out what we know and, and the story that we've created for ourselves, the script, if you will, that we've created. Wow, slightly going off tangent, but I still think it's amazing content. I hope you're appreciating this, folks. Um, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, and this is why we need to work hard to change these beliefs. Because an overactive ego is a sign of chronic stress, okay? Uh, Overly identifying with who we are, experiencing that beta brainwave state way too much. The beta brainwave state is essentially when we have about 60 thoughts or more every single minute. Our minds are overly analytical, very thoughtful, being judgmental, stereotypical, being very thoughtful, evaluating things, evaluating ourselves, evaluating others, uh, thinking about a ton of different things at the same time uh, when your mind is on overdrive, okay? And, you know, unfortunately, most people spend the majority of their day living in that beta brainwave state. And you can change that. You can become more alpha, which is the 
the main brainwave state that we wish in order to influence our subconscious programs, change our beliefs, take more control in our lives, be more creative, be more thoughtful, be more relaxed. I call it relaxed uh, awareness, detached awareness, if you will. And this is when your emotions are not so stirred as much. You have about 30 thoughts or less per minute when you're in alpha. Things like meditation, listening to music, um, or mild de- meditation for that matter, uh, experiencing flow when you're doing an activity that's so, that, you, that really f- enthralls you and really captivates you, that you don't feel overly burdened by it, or that's that an activity that's not too easy either. Uh, when you experience flow, you're, you're operating within them. Um, the alpha brainwave state as well. It's the best for learning creativity uh, uh, and really uh, taking control of our lives, to be honest with you. Um, So look to experience that more often as a way of counteracting our overactive ego. Uh, Put things into perspective. Understand the meaning of life. Do things like exercising, meditation. Focus on the basics such as breathing. Concentrate on the present moment. Don't constantly be worried about the past or overly fixated with the future because all we ever have is um, the present moment, right? Uh, We want to operate and function at our best and that's one main method for doing so. Um, how else can we change our beliefs? Um, changing our lifestyles, essentially, making sure we don't see the same things, ex- go to the same places every single day, drive the same place every single day, drink from the same mug every single day, talk to the same people every single day, read the same kind of emails every single day, watch the same kind of programs every single day. Um, and all these sorts of things, okay? The more you do that, the more you remind yourself of who you are and you remind yourself of your narrative. And it's very hard to change your thoughts and your beliefs um, if you're constantly reminding yourself, going on WhatsApp, going on social media, reminding yourself who you are, uh, programming yourself that this is the way your life is, creating that kind of fixed lifestyle. Um, No, we want to break free from that. We want to stimulate what they call call neuroplasticity and therefore neurogenesis. That means uh, experiencing new things, learning new things, developing new skills, developing existing skills even further um, going to new places meeting new people um, broadening your horizons if you are developing a more f- uh, flexible open growth mindset uh, challenging yourself partaking in new uh, challenges developing new hobbies these sorts of things are great for stimulating neuroplasticity um, how else uh, utilizing a whole host of NLP based strategies. So neuro linguistic programming we're talking about here. We're talking about things like visualization, the way utilizing affirmations, incantations, the way we communicate with ourselves, the language that we use, uh, the emotions that we evoke, you know, uh, knowing how to influence yourself, whether it be auditorily, kinesthetically or um, visually constructing things as a means of uh, influencing yourself, utilizing anchoring, which is when you kind of uh, associate certain positive uh, connections and memories with with a certain movement that you do. And these sort of things can help over time to to create more uplifting, empowering emotional states and physical states for that matter. And doing these sort of things makes you perform better, makes you take more action, makes you learn more. Therefore, you grow more. The more you grow, the more synaptical connections you make in your brain. Uh, you, by stimulating neuroplasticity and neurogenesis, you create newer cells and connections within the hippocampus in your brain, the, your, your memory center, if you will, where most of your learning takes place and so on and so forth. Uh, this is how you begin to change your beliefs, building up new references, uh, making sure you don't have... Um, emotional um emotional connections to past experiences i'll touch upon that later on um but these are some ways to calm our circuits down to become more relaxed more passionate more purposeful more happy more content and therefore so you can change your beliefs and therefore become less jealous whoa damn i'm on a i'm on fire so let's continue So how yeah to be fair that was a perfect segue let's let's talk about that a bit more then so um we can feel jealous more often simply because of the fact that we might relive experiences or things that make us feel jealous you see if you're constantly reminding yourself of when you were rejected, when you uh, lost a job, when you had an accident of sorts, when your friends betrayed you, when your business partner let you down and ran away, I, I don't know, uh, when you got divorced, when your kids said that they hate you, I don't know, sorry about all this stuff, guys, but it must be done. 
Um, if you've got strong past experiences that really affect you today, what happens is uh, it's a form of trauma. And you've traumatized yourself because when you have negative associations to things that make you feel unworthy, things that make you feel uh, that you don't deserve what you want, things that make you feel like you're not good enough and you're insufficient, what happens is you begin to manifest those awful constructions that you've created in your mind, okay? Um, It's just the way it is. Now, it's down to us to overcome these past experiences. Again, NLP-based strategies can help with that. The way you uh, visualize these experiences in your mind. I'm not going to go into that in great depth today. Um, But you can, for example, help to uh, get over negative past experience and therefore be less jealous by, uh, say, if you visualize a time when you felt um, insufficient, inadequate, not good enough, unworthy and so on. Um, If you take away the colour, the brightness in these images, if you push it further away in your mind's eye, rather than being up close, zooming on on the experience, you can detach from the emotions more. If you take away some of the sounds, um, if you take away just how, like the resolution, if you will, don't have it in HD resolution, make it quite blurry, push it away, see it within a portrait or as though you're watching it at a cinema rather than seeing it through your periphery, as in it taking up the whole of your vision. And when you start to play around with things and you start to like play it reverse, if it's a video clip in your mind of a past experience, when you start to reverse it, play with it, you know, make the main character who made you feel like crap. If you make them like a clown or like look like a baby, big baby or something like that. Um, these are some really cool strategies you can do to uh, overcome some past uh, negative experiences that you hold. Um, because your past experiences are the reason why you feel jealous. It's the reason why you feel stuck. Is Jealousy means hopelessness, right? And the reason why you feel hopeless is because you remind yourself of why you're not good enough every single day through habit, okay? And that's why you co- you've continuously feel jealous as well. Because deep down you feel like you don't deserve it. Because you're reminding yourself of all the crap that you've experienced in the past. And it's time to overcome these uh, by visualizing a, a promising future for yourself, by uh, doing new things, changing who you are, looking after yourself, evaluate, valuing yourself, exercising more, meditating more, uh, learning more, reading more, you know, getting a mentor, really valuing your personal development, valuing your life, valuing your physical shape, your health, eating healthy, look after your mind, your body, your soul, and so on and so forth. Get better quality friends if they don't treat you well, if they're not supporting you, if they don't uh, serve you, if they're not there for you uh, down the line. And I'll come back to that later as well. Well, I'm on serious form today, I must say. You're welcome. Um, So, yes, strong emotions that hold us captive, that evokes negative emotions within us, will hold us back. It will make sure that we live in the past. It keeps us stuck in the past. You cannot improve in your life if every day you're reminding yourself of why you're a failure, why you are jealous, why you're not good enough, why you'll never be um, successful in whatever avenue you deem to be successful in or that you want to be successful in. Okay? So we need to overcome these memories and the making new connections in your brain, challenging yourself appropriately, moving forward. You're not who you used to be. You are a new, you should be a new version of yourself every two to five years. Okay? Because you're constantly learning, doing new things, changing your lifestyle, making new investments, uh, meeting new, better quality friends, uh, experiencing new things, going on holidays to different places, challenging yourself, your hobbies, your 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 endurance, your physical shape, whatever it might be, okay? And that's when you begin to... Because I don't associate myself with how I used to be five, ten years ago. I used to be an absolute wreck five, ten years ago. Well, not five years ago, but, you know, eight, ten years ago. You know, quite an insecure individual, someone who was highly anxious, someone who, you know, struggled with sleep, someone who uh, just had a basic job for a living and I didn't have no real prospect apart from maybe getting promotions every few years, but that wasn't enough for me. I wasn't loving what I was doing. You know, I w- I'd be, you know, dating a certain kind of woman. And don't get me wrong, sometimes I'll date an amazing woman, but it would be uh, few and far between, you know, because I had low self-esteem and I was making mistakes and I was acting more like a beta male and these sorts of things. Because I was uh, insecure living in the past and uh, I, d- I just didn't feel worthy of certain things. And through a lot of hard work, constant personal development, uh, visualizing a better future, doing new things, changing my own brain, if you will, becoming a new person, you know, I've, I've managed to completely transform some major aspects of my life. Uh, but it takes a lot of effort. And I'll touch up on that later as well. 
Whoa, this is serious. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll drop some knowledge, you know, seeing as though we're, we're making references uh, to different types of literature. I'll also give you an example of um, a lady called Miss Havisham, a character, quite a, a brutal, uh, highly traumatised, vindictive, manipulative character uh, in Charles Dickens' novel, Great Expectations. So Miss Havisham, right, uh, she was a victim. I'm going to move on to this later on as well. She developed the victim's mentality, right? She was left at the altar by someone whom, with whom she was supposed to marry. Um, obviously heartbroken, devastated. Um, she was unable to recover from that event. She stopped the clocks in her house. She stayed in her wedding dress for years. She even left the wedding cake to rot in the house where there were like rats and so on and so infesting the place. Um, she was stuck. And, you know, she, was, she, she became such an evil, malicious woman that uh, her only joy came from um, bringing over a, a young, vulnerable orphan child uh, named Pip, the protagonist in the story. Um, and she literally enjoyed having uh, her, her, um, another orphan that we later find that in the, in the novel. In the play, yeah, in the novel, sorry. Uh, named Estella. She learned to enjoy having Estella take advantage uh, abuse and tease young Pip. Pip fancied the Stella big time, and um, and uh, Miss Havisham really enjoyed the, the pain she inflicted on Pip for being a vulnerable boy. She hated males because of what she experienced uh, with the man who left her. And so, why do I say this with us? Obviously, it's, it's hyperbole. Obviously, it's exaggeration, but it rings true because people operate like this. Maybe not on that kind of scale, if you will. Or at least I hope not. Um, but they're constantly holding themselves back, reliving the past. That's why they constantly experience jealousy or anger or frustration or fear uh, or stress on a regular basis because that's the way they've taught themselves to be. So you can teach yourself to be jealous through repetition by being stuck in the past. So, yeah, the victim mentality, you know, listen, there are some instances where I can appreciate why someone would feel like a victim. You know, if someone was, you know, abused as a child, if someone was, uh, you know, raped, if someone was taken advantage of, if someone um, had a business partner and they took all their money and, and ditched them and they were left bankrupt, owing, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not million, millions to a bank and stuff like this um, and investors. You know, there are some horrific things that happen in this world where you can at least comprehend why um, someone would declassify themselves as a victim. Now, even though I believe that these people need to take responsibility, own the situation, gather themselves, uh, be a role model for other people who've been through other awful, horrendous situations. I get that. But there are a lot of people out there who simply claim to be a victim because they feel entitled there are people who claim to be a victim because uh, they just feel like people owe them because they think that they're someone special. They think they're overly significant and so on and so forth. They're, again, too overly obsessed with their ego. They're quite narcissistic. It fits their narrative to, to have other people feel like they should need to look after them. And the victim mentality causes jealousy because the victim is never fully looked after, even though they might claim all sorts of benefits, even though the victim might claim, uh, you know, want to cheat on their partner because they were cheated on many times in the past and these sorts of things. The victim will never be fully satisfied because they'll never be fully self-actualized, making reference to Maslow's hierarchy of needs here, of course. Um, they'll never feel truly loved. They'll never feel truly significant. They will ne never tru truly feel powerful because they have become users, to be honest with you. They've be they become despondent, they feel hopeless, and uh, they thus feel jealous. Jealous people feel hopeless. Jealous people do not take responsibility because they look at others, point the finger, and uh, the act of pointing the finger at others to justify their circumstance is uh, the excuse they use uh, to prevent themselves from um, holding themselves accountable. And that's why People who claim to be victims uh, will never truly experience the joys, the fruits that life have to offer uh, because they're too busy playing the game at the lowest of levels. Uh, and, and yes, it's a form of self-sabotage. Yes, 
uh, it's people who uh, never claim that they were wrong. They never own up. They never take responsibility. They never think that they can change their their happenstance, their situation because, you know, quite frankly, they're lazy. Quite frankly, they, they want other people to do the grafting, the hard work, but they never never want to be the ones who actually step up and own the situation. They're, they're not leaders. They, they, they get what they want, or sometimes, most of the time they don't, but they do their best, they try uh, to get what they want um, because they feel it is owed to them for one reason or another, because of their own mental dysfunction or what have you. Um, but the victim mentality often leads to people feeling jealous. All right? Let's leave it at that. Um, another reason why people claim to be jealous is because of lack of priorities in their lives. Yes, I'm talking about being obsessed with materialistic things, being obsessed with the external world. Listen, I've got nice cars. I've got nice homes. I make lots of investments. I do really well for myself as well. But I work very hard to ensure that I invest even more time, energy and finances on my personal development, on my soul, on my spirit, on my being, on who I am. And that's why I can honestly say I'm an extremely happy person. And, you know, I rarely ever experience jealousy. And when I do, I teach myself the right way. Because I know what happens if it becomes habitual. And when you're experiencing jealousy, you are lost in the ego. You are operating at the worst of your ability. So, yes, people who have their priorities wrong, people who only focus on external things such as physical attraction only, such as getting a trophy wife or husband, such as uh, getting primarily focusing on getting living in a uh, a show off kind of house, getting luxurious cars uh, only only for the means of showing off to others because why else would you get those sort of things? Don't get me wrong. It might feel good. It might give you a buzz. It might, may change your, your hormones and change your energy and stuff like that. I mean, I have lovely cars as well. I have lovely homes too, but I understand the, the pitfalls of falling into that world of being so immersed in selfishness, in being so immersed in showing off and reputation that you'll never actually be happy because you're too focused and obsessed with what other people think of you. And that can be extremely deleterious to our very being. So yes, a lot of people experience jealousy because there's always more. You know, there is always a prettier husband or a prettier wife, a prettier person out there that you could have married instead. There is always, you know... Uh, another path to greater wealth. There is always, you know, uh, a, a better situation, a better uh, lifestyle. There is always, you know, a more beautiful sea out there, a more calm sea. Do you know what I mean? There is always a, a more beautiful island out there. There is always, there's some, you know, the grass is always greener for some people. And that's when, when you always live as though the grass is always greener, you will always be jealous. Because you always want to be there on the other side of the grass. But it's all it's illusory. It's an illusion. Because, and I used to think like this as well. I used to think things like, uh, say it was a Saturday night and I was staying in for whatever reason. I was like, oh man, you know, people are out now. They're, they're laughing, they're enjoying nightlife. They're partying, they're doing this, they're doing that. You know, I used to sometimes think, and here I am here, you know, at home for one reason or another. Tired, exhausted or... Uh, you know, it didn't work out and, you know, I had plans and it was cancelled or what have you. And I'd, I'd feel like, you know, the grass was always green. I was missing out on something. And over the last three, four, five years, I've been able to really change how things mean. And, you know, a Saturday night, for example, of me being in, that's as beautiful as it gets because it's me. I'm in the present moment. It's me time. I'm there. As long as you are in the present moment, you're not thinking about something else, a better situation, then you are rich. You are wealthy. You are the party, if you will. You are love. You are that greater intelligence, whatever you believe in. So it's not where you are. It's who you are. That's a beautiful quotation. I should write that on there. <laughs> it's not where you are. It's who you are. I like that. Um, so, yes, working on the invisible, focusing on the invisible more than the visible, more than the tangibles, will ensure that you become happier, more peaceful, more joyous, and therefore less jealous, less prone to experiencing stress or anger or, or sadness and so on and so forth, okay? 
So work on the inside, guys. Like I said, exercise, meditation, self-development, learning, making time for your hobbies, making time for your loved ones. That's one of the main ways of being happy here. You know, making sure you're sleeping well. Give yourself the right kind of nutrients, the right kind of foods. You know, wake up and dance. Like, that's what I do. I drive people crazy. Uh, I I wake up, I I move, I smile. I'm always smiling and laughing. Always smiling and laughing. I've I've tricked myself to be in that way. Because some people say, like, Alex, something's happened to you. Like, something perceived negatively. Like, why are you still, like happy why are you not freaking out like i'd be freaking out if i were you why are you so chilled why are you no you just received some bad news about one of your investments or you just have something unexpected show up like why are you why are you quite chilled why are you laughing 10 minutes after experiencing this what's going on it's because i've taught myself to laugh it's because i've taught myself to be happy and joyous because i've taught myself to be present and to be grateful and to appreciate what you have and who you have around you and it's all about habits, guys. It's all about habits and what you've taught yourself to experience. That was for real. I like that. Of course, it was my idea, wasn't it? So, let's attack social media. Listen, I'm going to be honest. There are only two reasons why you should be using social media. Yes, I'm talking about Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, all these platforms, TikTok, Big Bok, whatever you want to call it, right? <laughs> now, I like these platforms because I use them to either learn or to essentially provide services and products to people who are in need of them. Or people who want them. I offer and give and experience experience a tremendous amount in terms of feedback, in terms of uh, financial reasons. And, you know, sometimes it's not bad to use social media for entertainment to an extent. I have, you know, it's similar to, you know, only enjoy the television for a certain amount of time on a daily basis, if, if at all. Um, because it can start to work against you. You know, most things in moderation. Apart from joy, abundance, affection, affinity, love, giving, sharing, all those sort of things. You can do that unconditionally. And I'll move on to that later as well. Um, But yes, social media. If you're someone who uses social media purely for entertainment, if you're someone who uses social media way too often every single day, not for learning, just for just wasting time or being nosy or this and that, you know, you will suffer. You will meet great affliction. Because, you know, the average person uses Instagram 150 times a day. The average person who uses, say, Facebook for 10 minutes or more, studies now show that people that every single minute you spend on Facebook, over 10 minutes, it starts to work against you. You start to feel sadder, more envious, more angry, more frustrated, more hopeless, and these sorts of emotions, okay? Because it's bullshit what people are posting most of the time. They use filters, they have fake pictures, they have fake looks, they, they're using fake cars, they're, they're with fake friends, they're taking pictures of, you know, they go on holiday and take pictures and pretend it's different destinations and they, and they drag it out to look like they're on holiday throughout the year when really they're on, only on holiday <laughs> once or twice a year. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it, it's very sad. It's very, very sad. And it's, unfortunately, it's, our culture and it's creating a great deal of depression it's creating an exorbitant amount of suicides it's leading to extreme cases of chronic stress and depression and i mean the stuff is doing to our youth you know adolescents and children uh, it's really sad to see how impatient they are even young young adults you know they expect they expect to create highly lucrative businesses within a fortnight. Do you know what I mean? No pun intended. Fortnite, you know, computer game. Anyway, like um, we're creating a culture that's so impatient, that's completely lost 
which is so ironic because we're living in a time where we've never been exposed to so much information. We've never been so intelligent as a human race than this moment in time. And yet we're suffering so much internally, mental health issues, depression. People feel like they can't change their situation. What I'm talking about today, jealousy. Like it's extremely sad what's going on out there. And social media definitely has a, has a stronghold on our circumstance here. And it's because we're perpetuating fake lives. We're perpetuating um, tangibles, luxuries. And we're making it seem like that's more important than joy, than smiling, than being yourself uh, and so on and so forth. You know, even successful businesses, self-employed people are doing really well for themselves. Like they only promote and share things on their profiles when things are going well. They don't show when they look exhausted and messed up after working for 12 hours. They don't show their face with their baggy eyes and looking exhausted. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? They're not not showing pictures of when they're stressed out and when they pull their hair out because work has gotten to them and they're really (laughs) stressed. Do you know what I mean? They only show the times when they're looking great, when they're able to purchase this or when they've... uh, created a new product or service, you know what I mean? They're not showing uh, the ins and outs, but we have to be smarter than that. We have to understand that there are ins and outs. We're not seeing the suffering, but we have to understand that there's a great deal of affliction here. And we have to take social media with a pinch of salt, metaphorically speaking. Hopefully Himalayan salt. It's good for you. 84 trace minerals. Sorry about that. But this is real. This is a real problem. And it's one of the main catalysts, if you will, uh, creating this onslaught of jealousy um, that people can't escape from. Okay, Uh, now let's look at generalizations. Okay, listen. I understand why people generalize. It makes things simpler. It makes things more comprehensible and so on and so forth. Right. But when people generalize, again, they start to create beliefs. Beliefs are just thoughts that have been connected and reinforced. It's a neural pattern in the brain. It, but a belief is formed because there are enough references, enough stories, enough examples that support someone's thoughts and beliefs in something. So someone could feel jealous because they've experienced certain um, things in their past that they've connected, associated, generalized to come up with a more generic belief, such as I am not good enough, I am jealous, I am incapable of change, and these sorts of things, these limiting beliefs. But we create these limiting beliefs through our generalizations. You know, the mind, you know, we've been, in terms of how long we've been on, in, in this universe, like, it's been a little over 200,000 years, right? We're fighting against 200,000 years of biology, of genetics from uh, how we've been predisposed to think. And we've been taught to focus on the negatives. So, for example, you might have a day that you were amazing. You saw your friends, you spoke with family, you did some great work, you worked on your business, on your purpose, you made time to go to the gym or sing or dance or listen to music or watch your favorite sports or play sports. And yet there might have been something small that happened that day that pissed you off. And we've been conditioned through biology, but also through our own conditioning here to focus on that one negative thing. And when we go to bed and so on and so forth, we'll think about that negative thing. But we forget about all the other tremendous, copious, great things that happen to us throughout the day. And it's our responsibility to battle that. We have to remind ourselves. And, and you know, you could use a diary. You can just remind yourself and think about the things that you're grateful for before you fall asleep and upon waking. Because that's when, you, like I spoke about the alpha brainwave state that's open. Your subconscious is very much open uh, for A short period of time, once you wake up, once you go to sleep, it's open when you're meditating, when you're focused on something and so on and so forth. When there's an absence of thought, okay? Um, But we need to condition ourselves to experience positivity. And we'll leave it at that. Now, the last thing I want us to talk about today is one way of overcoming jealousy. And I'm referring to unconditional love here. Hopefully you have at least a handful of people with whom you can 
go to in any situation to talk about anything. Someone or people or a troop, if you will, who are there for you no matter what situation you find yourself in. That's your army. Those are the people who have unconditional love for you. And those are the people who will back you up and support you in times of need and in times of struggle. And really, if you're ever going to listen to people, you either listen to them or you listen to your strongest role models. Those are the only people whose opinions you should value. Now, I'm not saying agree with them, but I'm saying that at least you can listen to them. Because if you feel as though you do not have unconditional love and you need to give it in order to receive it as well, remember that, then what's going to happen is you're not going to feel supported. You're not going to feel loved. You're not going to feel strong. There will be no emotional foundations that keep you strong, that keep you moving forward, that keep you being resilient and independent and creative and robust. Instead, we're more likely to fall victim to things like jealousy, insecurity, being self-obsessed, being unaware of what really matters in our lives, being negative, being depressed and so on and so forth. So we need to develop a team, guys. It's in, now, unconditional love, I'm also referring to yourself here because that's what self-esteem is, right? Loving yourself no matter how you perform. Loving yourself no matter how things go. Okay? And it's all about unconditional love. So take a moment to reflect upon your team. Whom do you turn to? Whom, do you, whom would you trust with all your finances? Whom would you trust with your husband or your wife? Whom would you trust with your uh, most sacred, sentimental belongings? Those are the people you need to surround yourself with. Those are the people who keep you strong. Those are the people you need to talk to when you need to let some, some, some steam out, if you will. To let off some stress, to talk through things. And they are the people that keep you strong. And the more loved you feel, you're loving yourself, being loved by friends, being loved by familial members, being loved by your clientele, your, your fan base or what have you, your colleagues. When you feel, the more loved you feel, the more full you feel inside, there's no room for jealousy, guys. Like, supposed failure doesn't even matter for you. Making mistakes won't hold you back. You don't care about how the world perceives you because you know that the world is full of a lot of people who are either lost, living in chronic stress, unsatisfied people, people who would prefer to see you fall and break and give up. You know, a lot of these people want to see you fall in order to feel sympathy for you because people can connect more with people who are like them. And most people are not living captivating and thrilling, purposeful lives. Let's be honest. But not you. You listen to these podcasts. You're making a difference. You're working on who you are. And that's something really profound that I really want you to leave you with. Um, so I hope you've really appreciated the content, the knowledge that we've dropped. Now's a great time to reflect upon your feelings, your subconscious programs, your beliefs, your emotional home, the emotions you live by on a daily basis. Your identity, are you constantly challenging, learning, becoming a newer, better version of yourself? How often do you experience jealousy? When do you experience jealousy? Whom do you envy? How do, how, and this is another thing, how do you react to jealousy? Because, you know, most people experience jealousy and then they use it to either do something negative, like become a keyboard warrior, if you will. Do some really awful negative comments on people's posts to make them feel bad or to, to make a mockery, mockery out of them. Or they say something quite hurtful or they bully others online or, you know, they take out their jealousy on their familial members or their friends. Uh, I believe Freud, in one of his um, strategies, he, he called it, I think it's displacement. I think he called it displacement where you take out your, your anger, your frustration on other people, people who are close to you because you feel as though you can't take it out on the actual person you're jealous of in this instance. Really deep stuff. Um, so yes, reflect on your life. Reflect on how happy you are. Reflect on how jealous you are when you're experiencing jealousy. What would make you happier? What practices can you implement on a daily basis to condition your habits, your beliefs, your thoughts, your emotional patterns? 
How do you how do you use social media to make you happier, more giving, or does social media use you? Be honest with yourself here. How much of a victim are you? Or are you a leader? Or do you set examples? Are you a role model to other people? Or do you look to uh, or do you feel entitled? Do you claim to be a victim? Do you feel like people or owe you? And that's why you never amount to uh, greatness. You have to be honest here, guys. You need to self-reflect because if you don't self-reflect with me, you're not going to do it with other people in your world. When you're in your living your narrative, when your ego's running swiftly. I have it all the time. I have tons of close people for me. I have close friends, close familial members who know the content I live, who see me, how happy I'm on a daily basis, experience, they know how calm and, and peaceful I feel. They know how joyous I am. They see how, how much energy I have. They hear what I teach and yet they don't want to listen to me. Why? Because it's too close to home. It doesn't suit their narrative. They know me too well. And conversely, people who don't know me that well, that people who don't know me personally from around the world, these people really, really appreciate what I teach and what I share. They pay good money for what I offer. Because I'm not intruding upon their egos. And I want you to see if that is how you live or how people close to you live. And maybe you can have a conversation with them to help them overcome some forms of jealousy. So really, it's all about filling yourself up with joy, filling yourself up with happiness, with peace, by having a purpose in life, by being self-actualized, by working on yourself all the time, not coming up with excuses, not using jealousy to, to wish for other people's downfall or to be negative to other people because of their successes and their happiness. No, no, no. If you are jealous, use it to fuel you. Make it anger you. I'd rather you be angry and, but not take your anger on, on, on these successful people. I'd rather you take out your anger on yourself in the sense of taking more action, challenging yourself, putting your money where your mouth is, stepping up, experiencing new things, stepping outside of your comfort zone, developing that growth, flexible mindset, taking responsibility, leading yourself, working on yourself. And that's how you're going to start to overcome uh, your jealous beliefs, your uh, debilitating emotions such as experiencing jealousy okay if you appreciate this podcast you want to know more folks get my book like i said earlier the art of power happiness and success um especially if you're jealous of people's happiness if you're jealous of people's energy levels if you're jealous of people's wealth if you're jealous of people's relationships check out the art of power happiness and success um, if you're jealous of people's physical shape, their energy levels, their health, and so on and so forth, you might want to get my book, The Six Pack Mind. Again, you can get that at Amazon. You can also get it at my store, www.alexgemstore.com. Um, if you are single, if you're jealous of people's relationships, if you feel like you can't attract the kind of uh, man or woman you deserve, um, this book is primarily for men. However, some of the teachings within it really can help women out. Um, it's called Instant Attraction. You can get that at Amazon. You can also get it at my store. Go hook yourself up. Um, you can also get a course talking about going into detail. These courses are tremendous. You can get it at my website, www.alexgem.com. Click where it says join a PHS course today directly under my free ebook. Get my free ebook, The 10 Steps to Excellence. You'll love it. Um, it's a great short read, really concise, backed by science, backed by my experiences. Uh, I, just beneath that, as I said, click where it says join PHS today. Scroll to the bottom of that page. You'll see the testimonials. You'll see the course outline. You'll see what the course consists of. Every single segment has amazing video content, exclusive video content, uh, audios, the written words, if you prefer reading as a means of learning. They've all got tremendous worksheets that are personalized to help you uh, overcome certain issues, challenges, make you more empowered, develop your self-esteem, making you stronger, making you more confident, teaching you how to become the best version of yourself. 
uh, teaching you how to live out your goals, teaching you how to stay on track and avoid being distracted, reducing stress. Like this is incredible stuff, guys. I've also thrown in some sensational bonuses, hours of exclusive video footage, podcast material, audio segments, and incredible eBooks. Each eBook eBook worth uh, fifty dollars or more. Like the whole package is worth between $1,200 to $2,000. I'm not charging anywhere near that. Um, I offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're on that, that page now where you can see the course outline, uh, some of the segments are set to preview. If you click on preview, you actually get all of um, uh, all of the resources for free for that particular segment. So you can try before you buy, really. Uh, one of the main reasons why I charge is obviously because of the financial gains that I get, but also because you need to invest in something in order to work to, to deem it to be worthwhile. For you to take something seriously, you've got to invest your time, your energy, your money into something, guys. That's what makes you value it. That's what develops that emotional intensity within you. So it's a small investment, but an investment very, very worthwhile. Invest in yourself. You deserve it. Um, you might want to join me at the Power Mastermind, guys. Uh, hopefully, you can work with me in person. Talk about life-changing material, uh, the worksheets, the material, the stories, the sharing, the fact that you work with 20 highly committed, dedicated, brilliant people who want to better the quality of their lives. Like, Come and join us live. It is life transformational. You're gonna, it's going to start and instigate deep transformation, deep change. And I'm, um, it's absolutely incredible. If you can't join us live, you can get this at my uh, website as well. Uh, check out my social platforms. I, I'm always uploading um, the latest offers of my live events. But if you can't attend live for whatever reason, massive shame. But you, I've actually turned it into a course as well. Uh, so you can see me work with a live audience. You get the tremendous worksheets that's cost me hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, uh, and let alone hundreds, if not thousands of hours that's gone into learning these materials, creating this content, preventing it in this really easily digestible format. Go check out the Power Mastermind course, virtual version. Uh, amazing bonuses, amazing ebooks, amazing content included in that Um as part of the bonuses, as part of the package. You're going to be astonished by the price. Again, invest in yourself. You are worth it. I prefer working with you in person uh, because it's even more in-depth. Like That's how you begin to really affect the subconscious even more deeply. Um, but the course is tremendous and incredibly worthwhile as well. Um, start taking it seriously, guys. This is your life. You're in control of it. You can choose the life you want to live. You just have to change the narrative. You just have to constantly tweak things, be a better version of yourself, seek mentorship. I can be your mentor. Check out my coaching programs um, on my website as well. And have a fantastic day. Look to do something to make you happier, more peaceful now as a way of starting and instigating that change. And I can't wait to work with you in the future. Have a tremendous day, folks, and I'll see you soon.